Hello? Oh, hello. Am I speaking to Lewis Bruce? Yes, that's correct. Oh, good morning. Sorry to call so early. First of all, congratulations on the award of the Nobel Prize. Thank you. It's a, I was dead asleep when the you know, phone calls came. I did not answer them. And uh, <laughs> um, it's a surprise. At this point, you know, at this point, after all these years. Indeed. It, how did the news actually reach you then? Well, the phone kept ringing and I was trying to sleep. And um, normally that doesn't happen. And so I finally got up and returned one of the phone calls. And it was from some kind of um, a television station, I think, in Miami or something like that. You know, and they wanted to get my reaction. And they told me, you know, they, they were the first people to tell me that I had one surprise. <laughs> Um, so that's that, that's how I got it, basically. And then I just looked on the, on the internet to make sure it was real, you know. And there it was. You're, yes. <laughs> Your first reaction to to realizing it was the case? Well, first reaction is thinking about the whole field and people who did not get it, you know. So this is a collaborative effort, you know. It's partly physics, partly chemistry, partly material science. Synthetic laboratory, synthetic work, you know. You know organometallic chemistry and so that's it it's basically done by a collaboration rather than one person making a discovery and i've had some very strong collaborators who participated strongly in this you know this should be recognized as well one is paul alvisados of the university of chicago another is uh, mike steigerwald here at columbia as well besides the people who actually won it you know you know the third one is Sasha Efros. At the, that's what went through my head, you know. This is a team effort. To you personally, what does it mean to be awarded the prize? Well, it's, it, it's a great honor, and it's recognition for the field. It's recognition, you know, that I have worked very hard on this subject for a long time, but at the same time, there are many scientists all over the world who have worked very hard on their subjects um, for their lifetime, and... Um, so I'm just lucky, I guess is the right word, you know, that the Nobel Prize is chosen to honor this particular area of science at this time, you know. Nicely put. It was, it was a long time ago, it was 40 years ago that you first produced colloidal nanoparticles. Yeah, I began to work on this in the early 1980s. And it was, for me, it was an accidental discovery. I wasn't intending to work on it. I was using semiconductor particles for um, chemistry purposes, for spectroscopic purposes, you know, studying chemical reactions on the surfaces of semiconductor particles. And we made smaller and smaller particles just empirically, you know, by re using recipes. And I began to notice that the spectra of the particles began to change, and I didn't understand that. And I don't think anyone did at that point. And, and so I slowly, rather than studying the chemistry that occurs on the surface of the particles, I shifted into studying the basic uh, physics and chemistry of the particles themselves, trying to understand the size evolution. What, that's, what goes on here is, is evolution from molecules to bulk solids or bulk semiconductors as the particle becomes larger. Smaller ones, really small ones, behave just as simple molecules in chemistry, and as they get bigger, they take on more and more solid-state characteristics. So that's what we, you know, that's half of what we did, basically, this kind of fundamental knowledge or, or you know, trying to understand this evolution of size. And the other half is that to actually make the particles, you know, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> that allows them to be used in the televisions, you know, for the... Uh, uh, quantum dots and televisions and, and things of that sort. But the important point there is taking notice of the questions as they reveal themselves to you. That's right. It was accidental, you know, and so then we just realized that it would be important. Mm -hmm. You know, I, at the time I was working at the, uh, the Bell Telephone Laboratories in New Jersey, and, you know, that, that was the laboratories were part of the electronics industry, the semiconductor chip industry, and I knew for sure that as the, um, the particles... You know, the semiconductor, they were trying always to make smaller and smaller transistors. Hmm. And when they succeeded, if they succeeded, you know, they would reach this size regime where the properties began to change, to become more molecule-like rather than semiconductor-like. And so for that reason, I knew that this uh, research, you know, would be valuable uh, in that context. Yes. And of course, that the environment of Bell Labs was legendary. For yeah, so that's, that's, what, that's what I was trying to make the point in the beginning, you know, that it's a collaborative effort.
And so I was able to talk. I mean, basically, the culture of the laboratory was, uh, well, you know, I'm a physical chemist, and, a chemist, and I, uh, there were experts in all different subjects, mostly physics inside of Bell Laboratories, and I was able to talk to all of these people. The culture was such that their doors were open. And when I had a question, you know, I wanted to learn something quickly, I could just go to find somebody who was an expert on the subject and knock on his door and go in and discuss it with him. And uh, so that was an excellent, you know, unique way to um, make progress in an area which is not traditional. Mm. So, so many people have tried to recapture that spirit of the Bell Labs. It's, it's hard somehow. Yeah, it is hard. I mean, you know, the basic research is um, not really a good fit for industry, you know, in um, in the sense that the results of basic research are just so unpredictable. You know, you can't really um, tell it's going to help one in business or one product line or one company over another. It's best to try and do it in the u- university, you know, the context or mm. research institution context. Mm. You know, you know, your farms in, in uh, there's, a, uh, there's a biophysics institute in uh, Virginia, uh, Howard Hughes Medical Institute, and uh, that captures some of the flavor of the old Bell Labs. That's right. Eric Betzig, another chemistry laureate, he worked there, didn't he, for a while? Yes. That's right. Betzig was the collaborator of mine in Bell Labs before he left, you know, to... um, He was out of science for a period of time, and then he came back in um, as working at the Nellia Farms. But I published a couple of papers with him in the early days. Again, this inquiring mind and wide-ranging interest and somehow knowing that to focus on, on what matters. It's an, there's an art to it, but who knows what that art is? Yeah, you have to give the credit to the management of Bell Labs as well, basically because they allowed me to, to continue to work on the subject once they understood you know, that it was important. And that was before the outside world understood it was important. You know, It was not something that was worked on in academic life in universities or in other companies. That was always the strength of Bell Labs. We tried to work on things that uh, um, it's always best to try to do research on something that is an empty field and other people don't really think about, and uh, there is an uh, opportunity to make progress. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a fascinating discussion, and I, I can't keep you on the phone for too long. I just I noticed on your website you summarize all your life's work as being trying to understand what electrons are doing, and I love that. <laughs> Yeah, so I used to work many years when I was very young. I was coming out of school. I worked on small molecules, you know, uh, three and five and seven atoms and things like that. And uh, but it's it, there. The question is the same: What are the electrons doing in that in those small molecules? And how to understand it? And uh, it's the same question in solid state chemistry. You know, it's just a larger larger piece of matter. Mm. I had a question just just keeps on expanding. <laughs> the more you look, the more you have to ask. How does the prospect of the the the, the days ahead with um, extra interest in you and your work um, strike you? But what I will do in the, you know in the coming weeks and so forth is just try and discuss all of this with people who are interested, uh, just to promote the, the uh, hmm. chemistry and this area of. Uh, Basic science, you know, it's become important now, but it was not important years ago and so forth. It's been such a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed hearing this call, don't miss our bonus episode, where Adam Smith takes a turn as guest, and we go behind the scenes from these very special moments. Find it on ACAST or wherever you listen to podcasts.